Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. Toyota is one unique and a very intriguing company as you know. They are the uh, largest car company in the world now and one of the most profitable in the business. But there is a kind of a secret recipe or secret method that Toyota uses that is different from any other car companies. And I want to share with you that secret method or secret approach with you today which could actually change your life because the methodology they use or technique they use can be applied to personal life as much as it can be applied to business life. So first let me explain to you what is the secret method or thinking that Toyota has that is different from any other company. So let me walk you through step by step Toyota's secret Kaizen method. So exactly what is this unique approach or methodology that Toyota uses that makes it very different and unique compared to other car companies? Well, let me walk you through each of these steps. So this is called a Kaizen method or problem solving technique. Kaizen is a Japanese word that means good change or change is good. As you know, in the Western culture, we don't like change. When someone says, hey, change is coming, we kind of run away from it saying, I don't want change, I'm happy with what I have. But in the Japanese culture, especially in Toyota's culture and Toyota's mindset, they embrace the change, they love the change because they know changes will make everything better. And this concept of taking a process or product or something and making it better every single day, that thinking is called the Kaizen thinking. It's a very common word in Japan but it is the most important word in the Toyota's business method because Kaizen drives everything they do. They are constantly trying to improve the product, the process, or people themselves. So what do they do exactly? Well, let me explain to you how Kaizen works or problem solving technique. And as I mentioned, you can actually learn to apply this to your personal life and improve something in your life as well. So here it goes. The definition of problem is the first step. And the definition of exactly what is a problem is defined by the difference between where you want to go and where you are today. So let me give you a very simple example. Let's say I want to buy a thousand dollar bicycle because I always wanted such a bicycle, but I only have $200 in my uh, budget for the bicycle. So what is the difference between the two? Well, I want to buy a thousand dollar bike or save $1,000 and I currently only have $200. So the difference between what we call the target condition, which is where you want to go, and the current condition, which is where you are today, is the difference between $1,000 minus $200, so it's $800. So we call this a $800 problem because we have to save additional $800 to be able to buy the $1,000 bicycle. That makes sense, right? Or let's say if it's a business example, we want to have 10% market share, that's your target condition, but we currently only have 5% market share. Well, the difference between where you want to go and where you are currently is 10% minus 5% or 5% as a difference. So the problem is a 5% problem. We have to improve the market share by 5%. So that's how you define a problem statement. It's always the difference between where you want to go, which is a target condition, and where you are today, which is a current condition. And the gap, or the difference between the two, is what defines problem. Typically, this gap, by the way, is sort of a three to six month time frame. So exactly where do you want to go in three to six month time, and where you are today, and then you can now figure out exactly what the gap is. So up to this point, most car companies know how to do this problem solving technique. But this is where the difference starts. Toyota goes way beyond that. They go above and beyond this short term three to six month problem solving technique. They ask the question in 15 or even 20 years or perhaps 25 years down the road, what do you really want to do? We call this the big dream or dream state or ultimate dream. And they ask this question, regardless of what you're trying to do here within three to six month gap statement, what do you want to actually accomplish way down the road, 20, 25 years down the road? 
And then they want you to figure out whether that big dream can be linked or aligned to this problem statement. I'll give you an example. Back to the discussion about the bicycle. I want to buy a $1,000 bicycle. I only have $200 in the budget, so the difference is $800. In six months, I have to save $800. That's a simple problem statement, and you have to find a way to figure that out. But in the world of Toyota thinking, they go beyond that to ask, why do you want to buy the $1,000 bicycle? What purpose does it serve? And in 15 or 20 years, is that what you really want to accomplish is buying the bicycle in alignment with your long-term goal. So in this case, yes, I want to buy a $1,000 bicycle, but in 20 years, what is the goal anyway? What is it that you're trying to achieve? And what is the purpose? If you said, hey, I want to be super healthy and super fit so I can live a long life, that's why I want to buy a bicycle. So then the big dream is to become super healthy in let's say 20 years, but maybe buying the bicycle isn't the only way to get healthy. So then you begin to ask the question whether the target condition should be a thousand dollar bicycle or a membership to a gym or to hire a coach to help you become a healthier person. Where does the money go then? Maybe it's not bicycle because your long-term goal is to become healthy and buying a bicycle isn't the only way. So you can see how when you project the thinking beyond the three to six month onto 10, 15, 20, 25 years as a big goal, as a big dream, you begin to question whether your short-term target is still the right short-term target. Another way to look at this is to look at the business example I gave you, which is, hey, we want to have a market share of 10%. We are currently 5%, so there's a 5% problem that we have. But what if in 15 to 20 years, the goal isn't to have the largest market share? What if the goal is to become the most profitable company in the business or in that particular industry? Well, there's a difference in approach between trying to become the most profitable business versus having the company with the most amount of market share. If your goal is to have the most amount of market share because you want to become dominant in the business 10, 15, 20 years down the road, then yes, going from 5% market share to 10% market share is the right thing to do. But let's say your big dream of the business is to become the most profitable business, not necessarily the biggest market share or the biggest company. Well, then your target condition should be something to do with the profit margin or how to become more profitable and use less wasted money. So then your target condition and the current condition and the gap statement will change in the short term because your long-term big dream is no longer about market share, but it's about profitability. So I gave you two simple examples. I hope they make sense to you. Uh, but how does this apply to you, personal life or maybe business life? Well, this part, first of all, is something you have to become good at. Every time you're trying to solve a problem, come up with a target condition, a current condition, the gap statement, and then from a gap statement, you can try to figure out what is the steps or the process to go from here to there. So that's something you need to learn. And I'll talk about this in one of my future videos, exactly how to do that. But at this stage, you also have to ask yourself this question, what is my big dream? What is my long-term goal? What is the purpose and the reason for doing all this? In 20 years, what do I want to do? What do I want to become? If you ask that question first, before you define the problem, then this definition of a problem statement will change automatically to align with a big dream or big goal. So if you can do that first and then define the problem statement, that approach produces a, a very unique and effective result because you are moving toward that dream. And so that kind of thinking produces what Toyota is doing today. Long-term thinking, it's all driven on purpose, on life goals, something that digs deep into our heart and make us think and make us a little bit more emotional about life and work. So this method, this combination of long-term thinking mixed in with a shorter-term gap statement is what I actually teach on the Toyota production system to many companies globally. This is a unique approach, something that can really benefit you in terms of personal life or business life. And hopefully in the future videos, I can show you exactly how to do this. Now, if you're curious as to what this is actually called, well, the gap statement portion is simply called a problem-solving technique or Kaizen method. 
But this whole system, which includes thinking about the future and the short term at the same time in combination, has a number of names. At Toyota, it's called TBP, or Toyota Business Practices, which was introduced back in 2006. Since that time, a lot of American authors and uh, researchers have adopted different names for this method. So for example, it's called A3 problem solving technique. It is also known as the Toyota Kata method or KATA. So there's a number of names to describe this whole approach, but regardless of what you call it, it is intriguing, unique, and extremely powerful if you use it the right way. So in the future videos, let me show you how. But for now, Hopefully you understand one reason why Toyota is different and there's a lot more to come. Thank you so much for watching.